And I'm going to do a very short one since we're short on time. And then we'll go to summer. Okay. Flying in an apple, lip as petal, slow curling, finish it off, quick spherical wonder of mouth surprise. You didn't say it out loud for eight years, but tonight you found the wing edge of a tongue nestled warm, dark, soft, red, and beating time to a fault just behind my ear. Listen to the staccato artery running safely and wild back behind the earth. They struggle with bones. Finally, blue eyed schizoid words emit them foul and true. Waste your time full of it. High, <laughs> high flying dares the flower. Final cut. <laughs> so that's a short one. That's from college. <laughs> okay. Well, let me introduce her wonderful feature tonight. One more, right over here. Okay. We have the wonderful, wonderful Summer Jade. She's based out of Nashville. She infuses poetry and spoken word with music to create poetic verses. A lyricist at heart with a passion for reciting poetry, Jade credits all of the art to the divine intelligence of the most high God. With a blend of poetic truth and passionate love for music, the perspective of her work is to speak life. And her website is www.poetiverses.com and that's P-O-E-T-I verses.com. And now if you're ready, Summer Jade, We'd love to have you. <laughs> I am ready. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Um, hello to everybody. Happy Saturday. Or Sunday. Is it Sunday? What day is it? Y'all? <laughs> what day is it? Saturday. Saturday. Um, Saturday. Happy Saturday, everybody. Sit me down and you stand up. I want to be invisible. It's all about you. Sit me down and you stand up. I want to be invisible. It's all about you. Speak through me. You are, you are, you are, you are. Sing through me. You are, you are, you are, you are. Questions. Why are you dying? Dying trying to live for people. I mean, you hardly a piece of they seem to deceive you into thinking they need you, and so you believe them. And then they leave you grieving. See, abandonment's your weakness. Why are you dying? Dying trying to live histrionically in what could have been, what should have been, what would have been. Center thine self upon high things, for there sits the healer of all the wounds that still sting. Why are you dying thinking that this is life and every day you're sinking into a pit of suicide, drowning in this well of depression, bound in this demonic oppression, suffocating by your own obsession and need for perfection, bleeding from the wounds of rejection when you've already been forgiven and accepted? Why are you dying living the clearest rack life selling yourself shy when you're above top shelf value chosen noted written in the book of life created in the image of the most high work of art perfect from the start but you out here casting pearls to pigs as they trample over your heart why are you dying starving in what you want to do consuming molded bread of the world's menu rebel you why won't you eat what i give to you hurling maggots and poison when i've given you fruit see your beverages are bitter your main course revenge got wicked in your belly and venom drips from your lips as you sipping on sin so why are you dying trying to live speak through me you are you are you are you are sing through me you are you are you are you are like the waves that flow in the ocean and the wind that moves the trees like the blood that flows through my body you see that's how god moves in me his presence enters in through my mouth as I speak his name and he moves. And if he moves in my mind, then my thoughts will be pure. If he moves in my heart, then my heart will be whole. If he moves in my soul, I'll have rest when I'm weary. I just need him to keep moving. And like the wind that moves the trees, his presence passes by. 
And all I have to say is come into my life today. I need you today. Take control of my life. See, I need you today. And he's moving. Oh, he is moving. And if he moves in my home, then my family will be blessed. If he moves at my job, then my next parents will have to flee. And if he moves everywhere that I go, that I go, that I go, oh, I'll be free. As a long as God keeps moving. Yo, what a dream that's still alive. A dream that our parents, grandparents, and even some great grandparents witnessed the first black US president alive. And now we got a black queen in the VP seat. Yo, this dream just keep getting sweet. The nation's doctor is even a black king. And we continue to see black leads on the scenes in politics and in sports, in medicine, literature, and the arts. So the dream that the king had was merely a start. And it's alive as we observe our people rise in the workforce. Thurgood Marshall and Clarence Thomas rocked the Supreme Court. Althea Gibson broke barriers in tennis and Serena Williams revolutionized the sport. Magic Michael and Kobe legends on and off the basketball court. And Sidney Poitier changed theater winning that Academy Award. What a dream dream that still lives with possibilities for equality, one with opportunities for liberty in the land that they say is free, a dream that we're all created equal like the Declaration of Independence because that's still one truth that's not evident. We're dreaming that our people protesting peaceful would be met with love and instead of hatred and evil. What a dream, a dream that America will admit to its darker side as it's vivid right before their eyes. Dream that our nonviolence wouldn't be considered riots, that our silence wouldn't provoke aggressive behavior and anger, that the steel power of our presence wouldn't be so dangerous, that the love and compassion we have for our killers and captors would be contagious and reciprocated. What a dream. And we still dreaming. Guide my tongue so you are heard. Make me invisible. Apart from you, I can bear no fruit. And life would be impossible. I have your way. You're welcome here. <laughs> Permeate. Let your spirit fill this place. Oh, I have your way. Yeah. You will. Come here, permeate, let your spirit fill this place. Oh, it was the first time I'd ever tasted real love. But before that, I only knew Hennessy and Jack. I rock crown all day, every day, and Bacardi was like my ace. You see their personalities different, yet their motives were the same. And Hennessy's got this real swag to his game. My lips were in place, ready to taste. I didn't need a chase of this, this was straight. But it never occurred to me that I could be burned by Hennessy. I, I didn't want him anymore, but he still wanted me. And oftentimes he would hide who he really was with me a taste that I loved. And to the truth, I was naive. He would deceive me, hoping that I'd love him the way he said he loved me. And after a while, I became addicted. Then I was introduced to a new friend. Bacardi, she was so convenient. When I didn't have my number one, she was there to listen. But who would have thought she went both ways? She made it very clear. Bacardi didn't discriminate. She didn't see male nor female, but rather an escape from a place in which she was confined until someone desired her taste. And so she played this game of seduction and tease me for her own satisfaction. You know, I thought it was love, but it was only lustful passion. That's when I met my queen. My crown, my love, she was everything to me. I would indulge in her every day of the week. She was so intoxicating, the way she tastes just made me weak in the knees. There she was, my crown, my queen. And when I was down, she would comfort me. My crown, my love, you see, that's what she was. Her majesty, her tender kiss, which encompassed my body and my mind, but now she's gone. My crown, my queen, she was everything to me, but her enticing taste in secret ways destroyed me. 
that's when Jack came to console me. You see, he and I could go for several rounds, and I must say, he could really put it down. I like to call him Mr. Exclusive. For what I was experiencing, his presence was conducive. I was so gone with him, I didn't think I'd recover, but guess what? Real love is what I discovered. So he took me away and began to say, this is love at first thought, never love at first sight. This is love in the daytime and intimacy at night. I am not like Hennessy. I am the Prince of Peace. I don't hurt. I don't burn. I simply cover you with me. I am real love. I have 66 books. Read all about me. And if you believe, then taste me. For out of my heart flows living water. Love a drink of me and you'll never be thirsty. You'll have all you need in me because I am real love. But you reject me. Why? It's because you fear me, right? What love of fear is darkness and I am light. Everything you've consumed is dead, but if you come to me, you shall have life. I am your daily bread. I am your friend. My father gave you to me and I am here to the end. I am real love. Draw near a lover, come closer. Place your lips to mine, for my love is sweeter than wine. I am not of this world, nor am I of this time, but I am real love. For you, I lay down my life. Lover, you are my spouse, my bride. This is real love. I wed you in my father's name. Leave the past. It's your history and has deceived you. But come and be filled with my fruits. Love a drink of me and I shall fill your cup till it overflows with my passion and my presence now. Taste me. So I did as he asked me. Out with Crown Jack and Hennessy, no Bacardi, just the king. Out with the old, in with the new. See, I am addicted to you. It was the first time I'd ever tasted real love. But before, it just doesn't exist anymore. He's all that I'm seeking for. I am in love with real love. Thank you. All right, so real quick, <laughs> I appreciate all the love. I thank y'all for listening. So I got two more I'm going to speak for you, and I'm going to be done. And I can't wait to hear some of you guys. It's going to be amazing. Um, last two pieces. Here we go. You see my eyes and they full of sincerity. I tend to be honest when I like what I see. At times I admit that there is only lust in me, but I ain't perfect. I was born with sin inside of me. I can't front, my eyes don't lie. And everything I feel shows up when I cry. And even when I smile, you'll sort of see a glow. But if I feel no love or joy, you'll never know. God also made me physical, so my exterior is beautiful. If you ain't know I'm broken, what I carry is said to be terminal. That's because I didn't pray, no forgive like I'm supposed to. As a result, I'm a soul no one can get close to. You know the saying, what you see is what you get. It's self-explanatory. But with me, what you see, it doesn't tell my story. You can't tell in my speech. It's so authentic, true. I'm real when I speak, but it's still blocked from the main entrance. You can't tell with my swag because that's all you see. Where everything lies is within the heart that beats for me. It shows my honesty and my sensuality. Other than that, ain't nothing soft about me. If you get to my heart and break it, you know you're killing me. I might as well be dead because you took the life of me. And when I recover, I go hard, but you still see death in me. I guess I died and went to hell because Shardy got burned. Struggle with weakness in my heart on my journey back to earth. But don't get it twisted. Soft and weak are separate things. My soft heart meant that there was a meekness, a kindness, a love that defied me. That's why I had no real strength, but it's cool. Still, if you get to my heart, it's a privilege to see its history. All right. None of this vanity even satisfies. It barely pacifies, cause there's still pain inside. Still captive of my mind, transformation by renewal often every time. And though I will to accept my flesh always declines. It feels the proper healing is so used to hurting. See, I can numb the ache, but I know it's worsening. The liquor leaves me dry, short is thirsty. Get lifted high and still returning to this earthly journey where they don't want me, perhaps I'm chosen. Delicately woven, crafted especially to master this, to bounce back from this. I'm just a broken pencil that he used for writing this. He put my life in this. Pain produced the tears and weeping is my medicine. Sometimes he stops my life to see if I am listening. And like the oxygen that enters in my body, I should be breathing him because I believe in him. Yet I believe in him, and no, it ain't green or on the other side. It's merely less than lies. And who am I to think that I can thrive in a place that's designed for me to die? Smoke. That's right. Smoke, smoke, smoke. It's the language of our enemy. Smoke. 
And though he knows the word like you and me, he uses it for bondage and not liberty. Smoke. He just be blowing smoke. And I can only speak for me. See, I've been known to choke as he reminds me of my failures through a microscope. And though he lifts me higher, he should have dropped me to the floor. And I become paralyzed by the message in his smoke. Smoke, smoke, smoke. But little did I know that there is one. Here he comes, blood soaked, and he's here to rescue me. Though I'm buried in the flames, I'm still within his reach. He just asked that I believe in him instead of leaving him. But there is love, there is healing, there is freedom, and it's found in him. He wants to know if I am seeking him. With all the noise around me, can I still distinguish him? He died and returned for me. He asked that I receive him because none of this will satisfy. But it leads me to myself and futile thinking, reprobate mine, and that I'll perish and have death in the afterlife. But if I hold on to him, then I will live and sleep. For there's a rest for me. There's a crown for me. This he spoke. This he spoke. He spoke, he spoke. Thank you. Oh, wow, I'm speechless compared to you. Oh my gosh, that was so powerful, moving, spiritual, beautiful. Thank you. Unmute yourselves if you would like and let's thank give you. Summer Jade a beautiful thank you for what she's just given us. <laughs> Oh, thank you so nice. much. That was marvelous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we have Brian Ira Franco. Are you here? He is first. If not, Cynthia Winfield, would you like to go first? <gasps> sure. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm good. I'm lucky you. I had this out. Be wonderful. Um, okay. Uh -huh. if, if my notes are correct, <laughs> I'm bringing you um, a couple of pieces from um, Sovereign Souls Project that you haven't heard yet. This, this is chapter five and six, and two new characters. Chapter five I refuse to be a victim. Todd, his first chapter. After. I refuse to be a victim. That's a hard sell with Bubba and company, slamming me into walls and lockers without any warning just because it makes their days flow better. I can't say it does the same for me. All that bruising, jostling, and pain is unwelcome, as it batters my body on a daily basis, unwelcome as they insist on making me into their victim, finding new blind hallways wherein to inflict their bruising punishments as they welcome me into the company of their tribe, as it flows over my life, a lethal spot of rapids breaking over the sharp, sharp rocks of my life without warning, always and forever, without any warning, crashing into my life wholly unwelcome and an unstoppable flow to which I have yet to fail falling victim every freaking time when Bubba and company roll into school or find me out and about town, I'm always and forever in for a bruising. All of my 15 years, except for today, today my friend Aaliyah gave the bruising to Bubba and the gang. Her warning was such that the whole company was cut down to size by her wickedly awesome tongue. Her words unwelcome to their ears as they became the victims to the gorgeous flow of her spirit lifting words. Her flow of positivity was not stopped by their normally bruising presence. Indeed, they fell victim to her sweet, sharp tongue, cutting their manhood to shreds without warning. Every last one of her beautiful words unwelcome to the humiliated ears of Bubba and company. Although I've yet to stand up for myself, much to Aaliyah's chagrin, it's because that company of thugs and their flow of activities bring their unwelcome attacks down upon me, bruising my body and ears, always attacking from behind without warning, such that I've little choice but to be a victim, as much as I refuse to own the role. Company be informed, your bruising is unwelcome. This is my salvo, my warning shot. I will live in a positive flow. I refuse to be a victim. Chapter six, Sharks, or the issue is color. Javier, chapter one. 
I'm swimming amidst a school of sharks, fins jutting above the waves. I know they eat people. Some days life is exhausting. All of these divisions based on race. Why is the issue always color? I am Javier, I am more than a color. But when you circle like sharks making everything about race, the desire to sleep washes over me in waves. I arrive home exhausted, please, just see people as people. It's that simple, people. I am a person of color. Un hombre, a person. It's exhausting. It's hard to swim unnoticed among you sharks. Never can I rest and float atop the waves. When you look at me, all you see is my race. You ask the question on every form. Race, ethnicity, sex, why can't we just be people, human beings, riding the waves of life flowing without regard to sex, race, or color, coexisting in harmony among the sharks? Then I would not be so exhausted, except you have me thoroughly exhausted. You toss the N-word, yell spick, it's always race. You simply behave like hungry sharks chasing seals, never seeing us as people. One glance, do you see a diver in a wetsuit, a black seal? No, you just see the color, our skin, and hate washes over you in waves. I am forever assaulted by your waves of anger pouring off of you, makes the the anger pouring off of you makes me exhausted. It cannot be as simple as color. We are all of the same human race. We are all people. Just behave like people, not like sharks. I am exhausted because you're all about race. I am a more than this gorgeous color, people, absent of beauty, blinded by hateful waves. Sharks. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Powerful, powerful voice. Voices. Thank you. Next, next. Get to my list. We have Clive Osman. Hello. Hello. Hang on a minute. I'm nearly there. Hello. Hello. Hey. I am aware that some of you will have heard this already, but it is part of my one woman show, Getting to Know Elizabeth. And this is very much edited because, well, time, you know, uh, even the Queen has to abide by time limits. So, um, so for those who don't know me, I am the Queen of England. Times are hard, even for my family, and I need some extra income to pay for a chauffeur. Now I've been Philip from driving. We don't want Phil killing a commoner when he's behind the wheel. Our insurance will go through the bloody roof. Now, Philip wanted me to do a bit of bar work. One told him to bugger himself with a billiard cue. I've got a better idea. Poetry workshops. I like poetry and I like to think I'm a deb hand. I have to keep abreast of trends in order to make sure my laureate isn't slacking. He is from up north after all. Now, I have to confess, I admire the younger generation of spoken word artists. I haven't actually listened to them, good God no but I'm told they are very good for their age. What I can't abide is middle-aged men trying to be down with the youth and comedians who call themselves poets. Clive Oseman, for example, wretched man. Oseman is really not a good writer and I'm going to give you all a free sample of my work tonight. Future lessons will be Zoom only and charged at 200 English pines per session. New Euros, thank you very much. Here are some extracts from his feeble attempt at humorous poetry called The Bigger Issues, a fairly recent attempt to follow up that wretched typos poem, which I can't stand. So I'm going to read extracts from this so-called poem 
and then I'm going to give my take. So I'm sure you will be able to follow it. I'm sure even though you're all commoners, you've got the, you've got the, the intelligence to, to split one from the other. So here we go, the bigger issues. Some people seek answers to big issues like the meaning of life or what happens to us when we die. To them, my issues are small fry, insignificant in the scheme of things, and I have to confess that stings, because I may not be intellectual, my grey cells are somewhat ineffectual when deep thought is deemed essential, but to me, the small things matter more. Hmm. Some decent rhyming there, if that's your bag, but first point of order, if small things matter more, why did it sting so much that you had to mention it in a so-called poem, eh? Tell me that. Anyway, it goes on. What are wasps actually for? They get mildly angry and it's all I war. You try to repel them and they sting you to fuck. They, they do it one more time for luck. They show no compassion, not one little bit. The barbarous, pointless, stripey shits. Totally needless expletives. You wouldn't catch Keats saying the F word just for the sake of a rhyme with luck, now would you? I don't think so. And stripey shits, really? If you ever get stripey feces, I suggest a visit to a Harley Street clinic immediately. It goes on. When I want to appear clever, I step it up a level and ask questions like, if music be the food of love, are cheese quavers an aphrodisiac? Is there such a thing as cheese semi-quavers to give one a quick thrill? If so, toss one my way, if you will. Clever? Really? I think not. And anyhow, Philip tried quavers, they don't work. I can vouch for that. Now, on the subject of food, does a fruit fly count as one of your five a day? I have my doubts, but if it does, I can ditch the sprites. Because they're not veggies, it's a well-known fact. They are Beelzebub's scrotal sack. Oh, come on. Beelzebub's scrotal sack? Have you not heard of alliteration, man? Beelzebub's ball bag. Better? Better. Now, if you buy a wok on the internet, is it an Ewok? When it arrives, are you in for a shock? Now, I have no idea what an Ewok is. And come to think of it, I don't know what a wok is either. So, oh well, never mind. Perhaps take that line out. If you stick your head down the toilet, which is not very wise, do you get floaters in your eyes? Now, I'm not sure why anyone would stick their head down the toilet, but I'm sure it would not cause floaters. Floaters are caused by changes in the eye's vitreous. I'm sure that's not affected by... What? Oh my God! That is disgusting! Osman, you are a disgrace to the nation. This is how not to write poetry. Unless you are an uneducated, arrogant, ginger, brummy pro. So, your first 200 pounds lesson with me will begin to show you how it should be done. I thank you, and thank you for listening, and 200 pounds via PayPal to Elizabeth Windsor. Thank you very much. Like someone said, my, my gut is literally hurting from laughing so hard. That was amazing, thank you. I needed a good laugh. <laughs> Thank you. All right, now next we have Dan Brady. Are, are you here? Maybe not. Okay, Epiphany Divine. Can you hear me? 
Edith Blackbird. Hi. Hello. Hello. Good to see you. Good to see you too. I'm so excited with this. And uh, thank you so much for, you know, hosting and being such a wonderful person, person as always. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You too. Thank you everybody. It's just humbling to see how much talent there is out there, you know, in the virtual world. It's amazing to see that. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Okay, I have a, a, two announcements to make. Is that okay for you, uh, Amy? Okay. The first announcement is that I'm going. Uh, we're. I'm going to be featured in one event called Valentine's Mas Mascara Day, and it will be on February the 14th. It will be. Uh, it's a, a co-host uh, event made with Finn and Christine Hall. They're both very amazing people. You will love their open mics, uh, Blood from the Blue and um, uh, Poetry in the Brew. They're both very amazing. So you will like those very much. And also, uh, obviously, with the theme of love and passion, fire, fuego. So in the next uh, other one, uh, other announce that I have is February the 21st from 3 to 5 p.m. Central Time. And it will, we will be have this amazing, amazing opportunity that Amy gave me, which is Lenguas Open Mic. And we love that because we are promoting or we're trying to promote as well as the uh, International Mother Language Day, which is the 21st, February 21st. It's amazing because we are trying to uh, promote awareness of language and cultural diversity, which is very important in our world. So with that in mind, you are all invited <laughs> if you want to participate or be an audience with us, witness this beautiful journey with the two of us and all of us. So hope you can be there. Thank you. And uh, and yes, I have this wonderful, uh, all these are uh, good news. And also I made, uh, it was very, very inspirational for me. So I made this poem called Lenguas, which is the name of our poem, uh, our, like, sorry. Oh, so. You like it. This is. Ready to steal a watch. You know, it's still a watch. Hello. <laughs> This is called Lenguas, and I made this poem. This is very short, and it won't take a long time. And it's called and it's like this. Can I make you some music, Amy? Is that okay? What now? Okay, let me know if you can hear the music and my voice at the same time, and if it's not too much. Is it okay with a thumbs up or is not? Is it? Oh, thank you so much. So this is called Lenguas. Hope you like it. Como? Oh, pero como se encienden los tímpanos when words are heard in different languages. Mm. Como arde el corazón. Como arde el corazón. Como arde el corazón. When emotions are expressed in a foreign way. My way. Your way. Our way. Exóticos acentos. Native sounds. Idiomas antiguos. Diverse voices. All needed now. Colorida gama del habla, de la escritura, de la lectura. Many languages to offer love while learning. En un mundo hambriento de voces. Many languages to explore into words of life and death. Fonética, phonetics. Phonetica, phonetics, phonetica, phonetics, phonetica, phonetics. The rhythm of languages que se danza entre naciones, todas las naciones. Hay diverse song beyond borders. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, wow. Sorry. 
That was amazing. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Maravillosa. <laughs> okay, now we have Rhoda Thomas. Uh -huh. Welcome. Thank you. Lovely to be here. We haven't come to the Gestalt before, so it's very nice. And beautiful <laughs> event, um, you know, Edith and, and Clive and um, Summer. Um, a short one just to begin is called Apple Tart. Fan the slices in a circle, sprinkle sugar, bathe them in hot runny jam, finger pinch the pastry edge, into the oven bang slam. Not one of those meat pies held up by upside down egg cup, pastry flakes falling off your lips, eyes hunting for mushroom ketchup. This is Mama's apple tart, displayed on Facebook to bring you back to the start when love was all and we would sing. So that's that one. And um, this one, perhaps with a, I only wrote it this week, it has a more contemporary feel. Um, don't know whether there's trigger warnings, a few very sort of sad things in it. Um, the boulder. And now the weight of it all has lifted. A giant boulder has rolled over the cliff edge and smashed into jagged pieces. Water, water eddying round each one. And you lying there on the floor. And when they came, I kept trying to clear up the mess underneath your body, as if when they lifted your poor worn shape and carried it out of the door, they might suddenly see all the foul words that you had used and all the reluctant conjugal duties demanded. I got on my knees and scrubbed away every drop of piss and blood around the silhouette shadow left behind. And they danced all along the shoreline and wore costumes and masks because by then there was a plague abroad. And I might have wished for those thousands of women to be back on the streets, women refugees, women mothers, women for abortion, women students, women workers, older women, black women, poor women, comfortably off women, gay women, trans women, teachers, saleswomen, amnesty women, survivor women, Jewish women, nurses, daughters, precursors of Me Too, women in woolly pussy hats, women in veils, women for justice. But no one is allowed to march today on account of the plague. I wander along the beach alone, letting salty effluent water ripple between my toes. I turn over a piece of broken rock in my calloused hand, too frangible, too much like cold, hard toffee to bite into. Pieces of this shattered rock scattered all along the coastline and bits of you will be seized upon by thousands of hands, banged against the limestone wall, smashed into smithereens, and in some cases, fragments will be pocketed for pebble collections. Yes, I was on my knees cleaning up where blood had dribbled from your nose and lips and urine had seeped out from your trousers. I had to do it before it was taken as evidence of my failure to keep a tidy house, to keep all the secrets. Your crude epithets contained in my penciled eyebrow arches, your menacing swagger concealed in my carefully applied lip gloss, your casual indifference to suffering covered up by crisp white tablecloths and fresh flowers, and much, much more. I'll put the piece of rock on the mantelpiece. You were rolled over the clifftop by hands other than mine and the ghosts of the women are dancing all along the shoreline. They are fucking dancing. And now I think I might join them. Thank you, Rhoda. That was so moving and so wonderful that you're speaking to the human rights of women around the world and how they're victimized around the world. Thank you. Do we have Special K? 
Okay, now Timothy Moore. Looking, okay. Doc Janning. Can you, are you ready, Doc? I am ready. How cool is that? <laughs> Have you won there twice? Oh, <laughs> I don't know how. I'm all, I only, I'm only using one computer. <laughs> That's my bad. <laughs> okay. Brand new as of today. Destination. We sail a treasure laden golden ship through ancient passages and pathways of time neath a star canopy night bound sky on the serene wine dark sea of love and a shining mangata of passion. We soar midst dancing arios dreams and sensuous songs of joy into the someday of hopes and dreams beyond tomorrow's shining clouds. Destination, bliss. Do I have time for another? Okay. This is tapestry. In the night sky lies a tapestry on the loom of time. It is a fabric woven of hopes and dreams in all the colors of forever. Beyond this night bound carpet is found the vanishing point of infinity. There, the passion of figured hopes and patterned dreams awaits. Beyond those, the sacred touch of inspiration and another world, a beautiful world where the heart finds a home. Thank you. So beautiful and lyrical. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Next, we have Henry L. Jones. Great way to start 2021. Um, this poem is titled Becoming More or Less. I'm not sure if I've read this here before. The playful gathering of dancing fingers running wild, like children stumping through a field of red flowers, who became lost, now searching for their way back home, through a portal fl flipping through pages of colorful storybook, where fascination explodes with a drizzle of colors. They chase the shadows of friends playing hide and seek, silhouettes reaching for life in its dimensions, hoping perhaps to find each other within themselves. Then looking between blades of grass and under soil, young minds filled with wonder and imagination to the twisted realm where Alice plays with the caterpillar, sipping on tea, enjoying the trembles of being frightened. She awakens something inside her that others fear, afraid to connect and become the flow to the center, churning the old cream of joy to a froth of truth, made into a frosting to coat the layers of sweet lies of the earth where cold old bones wait ascension by, but the, by the pile becomes nothing but kindling to make more flames rise. No one finds their remains, regardless of the watery eyes or how the bellows of grief echo through the waves. The hope is to dance, to try to forget, or maybe remember. Nothing is easy to release the damned emotions. Alice transmuted into goddess, part water, earth, and pain. She listens for the magical words and ancient songs in the air. 
her ears patiently open and feels deeply to the gentle winds. Nearby sycamore tree roots grab her legs to steal her. Stars bent by time, she runs between doorways to quickly hide. This isn't the moon, she knows but a garden full of promise. She twirls the new sun's flames, reaching inside ourselves a plot, planting seeds while teaching us to extend our minds and hopes, showing us to play with fire to become more and see more. We trace through the ashes, smelting high towers of steel, hoping to reach her and in many ways become like her. Science and creation reaching to the, to the skies, strong, long arms, wanting to embrace and retrace paths to palaces she flew to us. We only wanted to feel whole again for just one moment. No longer memories of the abandoned lover seeking the familiar. Touches and smiles without anger and bitterness from the past while sadness drapes us wanting to just understand why love wasn't plentiful enough to fill the emptiness. This hunger lingers, consuming the reach for old passions, building atop unhealed wounds covered with expired balm, soothing nothing as blisters, heated nugget added to hardness the hardness within us, only truly desiring to feel strong and unbreakable again. Lock the pain in our sacred space where we'd forget everything. The shuffled red petals fail, fall like cowrie shell prophecy, ascribing words to know how foolish is our foolish nature. So we rested in a field where wildflowers surrounded us leaving our mountains to let the sun melt away into night while resting and waiting for the worm as the worm still stirs honey, sweetening our flesh to eat before his emergent flight, pouring the overbrewed tea back into the rivers, streams around and inside us, pushing the edges of shores which helps our constant thirst to build come to an end. Lego clusters, we hope, won't tumble and crush our dreams. Peaked houses, nothing but tall shadows of ourselves, built atop the graves of brittle marrow and dry blood, which cause so much pain, but wanting now only joy as we still hope to understand our purpose from the high, looking at the clouds floating near the penthouse rooftop, smoking clouds, the worm ponders in his high back chair, or Alice laughs at us <clears throat> at our toys, knowing with just one blow, we tumble down the flights of our fantasy to be gods. She gave us the dreams and memories, but we shut our eyes as the story's pages turn, showing us ways to build within. Thank you. Wow, that was stupendous. The, the, the way you get into the metaphors and create the stories and the journeys just wonderful craftsmanship. Just thank you so much. That was wonderful. All right, is Mel Bradley here? Mel, no? Okay. Scott Coe. I'm here. <laughs> Yay. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Okay, um, two from me tonight. First one, it's a little bit sad, but it's an issue that shouldn't be swept under the carpet and too often is, uh, especially in this country. 
Um, I originally wrote this in 2019, and it's based on UK st statistics for 2018. And I want to hear with the fifth biggest economy. This statement holds no truth for me. Austere with honesty, economic with the truth. And on every city street, I see the proof. Where is the wealth? Except on tycoon spreadsheets, ignoring the real figures sleeping on streets. The money is hiding in warm tax havens. As people die on cold, dark pavements. 726 homeless died last year. 726 on streets so dark and drear. And how many more? Do we allow to die? Distracted by unicorns in every MP's lie. But even one is too many to count. So let's house them all by taxing Jacob's bank account. A stain on this nation. The greed of a few. And shame on us all that we let this continue. Thank you. Okay, let's lighten the mood. Um, something a little bit different for me. Um, here goes. Why are the most romantic poets also the most single? Do our words not make you swoon or tingle? Poems of love not made to last. Romantic dinosaurs trapped in the past. The world's moved on. Dating's now done in a rush. Love is dead. It's now all about lust. Acts of kindness do me no favours when the internet suggests rude new flavours. Am I old fashioned or doing something wrong? He's sexting you. I wrote you a song. I'm clothed and decent. He's on webcam in the raw, inspired by that dating show on Channel 4. Do you really want that? Or have I missed a trick? I bought you flowers. He just whipped out his dick. Roses are red, violets are blue. Are you not fussy? Any cock will do. But a dick pic is still a dick pic, even if you try and make it artistic. Whatever the focus or the filter, it still looks ugly and off to a kilter. And you, Sending pictures of your bum and your breasts and your thighs and oh, the rest. Not that I'm jealous and yeah, it's been a while, but I just settled to see you smile. Am I shy, proper or formal or the only one left who's actually normal? So whilst he's sending you pics of his parts. I'm just sending you words from my heart. Thank you very much, everyone. That was so beautiful. Thank you. And the first poem is powerful and so true. We see that here as well. Working on it. <laughs> New administration, we hope. Thank you. Now we have next February, we next, our next feature poet in February, Maggie Lee. She's here with us today. Hi everybody, my name's Maggie. Thanks Amy. You're welcome. For doing this as always. Um, I'm happy to be here. I actually just live across the street from Amy. <laughs> so she's zooming in at her house and I'm zooming in at my house. 
Um, but yeah, I'm pretty tickled. I haven't uh, read in a while, so I feel a little bit like I'm dusting off my bones, um, getting ready for next month. Um, I'll be the feature reader, which is pretty exciting. Um, and I got a lot of work to break out, so I appreciate y'all listening. Um, I'll just go ahead and get on into it. So we trapeze the dark seas throughout infinity, a silken wave, strings that bend and break. When they fade, the ghosts remain to remind us where travelers tried and died to carve a path between stars. All right, I'll slip into something a little longer here. Uh, so January to me is definitely a death kind of month, you know, like October is kind of where you like die a little bit. And then like, I feel like January is another one of those months where like I kind of just bury myself, hibernate and like let that like kind of quality of death, you know, be something I meditate on, not in like a, not in like a, um, a dangerous way, but kind of just in like a symbolic death sort of way. Um, can you guys hear me? Is that better? All right, cool. So anyway, this is a really pretty poem about death. Um, Sup garden, eat the love forgotten and bury bones and, and feathers rotting in our grave gray mouths. Don't bother washing. Let lingering ghosts into our most holy and unholy houses. Be sanctified so far from home and echo back, echo back smoke. Burn grass, sweet whip, turn the new planet, planets burn to black and white, black and white ash. God exhales trash from my lungs, orbit lurching now, and nostalgia for symmetry, embody my cemetery, liminal transition, corpses to color, tombs to cornerstone. All right. And I got one more for you guys. This is a short one. I call up home. She is gone. She is not my own. I do not ask her, where did you go? I already know. I already know. Thanks so much, you guys. Thank you, Maggie. From the heart, beautiful poetry, well-crafted. Looking forward, February 27th, same bat time, same bat channel. <laughs> Thank you. And now we have Tim Evans, a newcomer, I think. Yes. Tim, are you there? Yes, yes. Yay. Can you hear me? Welcome. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, some of you I've, I've, uh, I know, but this is the first time I've, I've uh, visited uh, Gestalt. Okay, I've got two for you, if that's okay. Um, right, one is, yeah, okay. It's, it's sort of, it's not exactly a pandemic poem, but it's uh, written during it anyway. And uh, it's called uh, Spit for the Swallow. Nighttime prowler skirting the perimeter. Midnight howler growling in the dark. Broken down chapel and a sinister minister slinging sulfate in the alley where the hound dogs bark. Electric shock jukebox, skip full of syringes, scattered confusion at the end of the day, witch hunted lies, exile and a lynching everywhere, heavy with a smell of decay. We gate crashed Eden and ended up in hell, working the steps one day at a time. When it's harder to buy, it's harder to sell. The bigger the fortune, the bigger the crime. We partied all night, but got shattered on the rebound. 
the volume cranked up all the way to heaven. It seems a long time ago now, but just turn around and it's standing at the corner, just like it was then. And there's one road to glory with no tickets to sell. And the horsemen are riding back home in the dark, too early to hear the clang of the bell, too early to hear the song of the lark. And here's a spit for the swallow, a spit for the crow, a spit for the children you don't want to know, a spit in the dust to mix up the clay, a spit in your eye at the end of the day. The house is red and full of radiation. The virus is crawling all around your door. You're going to need some pills and a spot of medication and maybe a visit to the liquor store. And the nighttime prowler is consulting his solicitor. The midnight rambler is scared of the dark. The boat broken down chapel is a speculative investment sold for six million to a Russian oligarch. These were the things that weren't supposed to happen. These were the beggars that beggared belief. We made an agreement to liquidate the faction and you swore you wouldn't bring in the police. Empty threats in the corridors of power Tremor so faint you didn't feel them at all. We watched the waves gather from the tall black tower and the ocean was rising like a great grey shawl. Times like these are the ruptures in history. The rip in the curtain, the crack in the wall and through the little cracks the ocean comes pounding. Who can say where the water will fall? Okay, that's the first one, guys. Um, and the second one's a, a little shorter. And, uh, you know, I think we all need a bit of hope. And uh, well, I, I got a bit of hope. Uh, I got a bit of hope this week when the, uh, the orange monster left the White House, uh, I thought, oh, well, you know, we may be in the shit, but at least, at least there's that. Uh, and so this is, this is a poem uh, for, uh, you know, uh, of hope, really, of hope, because we all need hope, because things will change and we will change them. Okay, so it's called Sometimes in the Morning. Sometimes in the... <laughs> I'm sorry, I, Clive has just posted up, I need dope, but... Uh, <laughs> I share your sentiment. Anyway, oh, sorry. Sometimes in the morning I can hear it breathing, sharp and cold in the dawning of autumn, so close it could be standing at my side. Sometimes in the morning, I can hear it breathing. Sometimes in the morning, I can hear its words, words never spoken, emptied by time and despair. Sometimes in the morning, I can hear its words put back together from the pieces that were left. Sometimes in the morning I can breathe in its smell of heather and grass, of sap and resin. Sometimes I can breathe in its smell of animals, of ferns, of tree, of leaf. Sometimes I can feel it on the wind, the breath of the future, through fields of injured dreams, and forests of illusion, of false dawns and broken promises. Still I feel it on the wind, the breath of the future. What should I call it? What is its name? It is love. It is justice. It is peace. It is power. 
Sometimes it is standing by my side in the morning. Sometimes in the morning, I can hear it breathing. Okay, guys, thank you very much for having me. Thanks for listening. Cheers. Wow, do you guys want to unmute for that? <laughs> that was so amazing. Thank you so much. Yes. Woo, Tim. Yeah, Tim. <laughs> right Brilliant there. And stark and Woo. beautiful and all of that. Just beautiful. Thank you. Next, we have Dre Zera. Hello, everybody. Can you all hear me? Yes. My name is Dre Zera, and I have got two poems for you. And these poems are a trip back memory lane because during this past week, unfortunately, a friend of ours within the poetry community known as Leon, he unfortunately passed away. And I went back in time and looked at my set list for how the event that he ran when I went to in March, 2017. And so I've got two of these poems to perform from that set. And this first poem is called The Discord of Witchcraft. It goes like this. Pitchforks sharp in sulfur rust, tears in valid tears inferno, cauldron spitting acid of no trust, stiffening rope coils to choke, scorn disaffected turn, burned on treason, there are no reason, bleed unrepentant turn to ashes, pulverize the lashes, discard witchcraft. Curses you took my mother, misogyny bullshit you cattle us dry, to live for centuries the second gender, shrouding the mist to black tar skies, scorn disaffected burn on treason, there are no reason, bleed unrepentant burn to ashes, pulverize the lashes, discord witchcraft, did the holy slaughter tell them to die, were the rabid rampants ordered to kill, did the holy scriptures scar new eyes, or was it the masculine supremacy? Scorn disaffected burn on treason. There are no reason. Bleed unrepentant turn to ashes. Pulverize the lashes. Discord witchcraft. Fight you feminist. Thank you. And so that poem essentially is uh, people that were burned at the stake for all witchcraft. It's total bullshit. Complete misogynist, terrible bullshit. This next poem is called Broken Circuit Board. About mental health in the mind goes like this. Mind cannot compute, all in disrepute. My sparks are gone, all undone. All I want is to function. Armor has ching, just cannot blink. My world is sunk, loading stunned. I need fixing, please, virus and disease. My CPU corrupt, all abrupt. Reboot me, antivirus. Free my MB, wipe my drive clean. Termination complete. Thank you. And thank you very much for, uh, for me to come to this event. It is an honor. Thank you. Thank you. That was very vivid and vibrant and powerful and all the good things. Thank you for speaking up about the women who and men who were lost during the what during the dark ages there. So I think I got the time period right. All right. Now on reserve, we have do we have Dana? Is Dana Malone here? Don't believe so. Leslie Constable. Eddie Foreman, <laughs> Gary, Chaos, Chaos, are you there? I think he had to go. Okay, Lantern Carrier. He's back. Chaos. Oh, is Chaos here. is back. Chaos. His phone is here. Chaos. 
Unmute. Let's see if he'll come back. I ask him to unmute. And then Lantern Carrier. All right. Carl, you're there. Yeah, finally. Yay. Oh, so I thought I wasn't on the program. You were on Hello. the reserve. So what? You were on the reserve list. Oh, I'm on the reserve list. In that case, then I best find something to reset. I, I did a poem the other day uh, for you on the thing for gun violence. I'd like to do that one tonight. It's called Keeping Score. I know him. I know him, I said, but we were just walking away. We were just walking away from that blood-soaked spot. Behind us, an old man was lying, dying. Behind us, an old man lay dead. He spoke to me. He spoke to me, don't you see? Just seconds ago, all was well. Now, some thug's violence had sent that old man's spirit toward heaven or hell. That old man, not here anymore. Life lived so long, gone so quick, stolen by a trick. Now his blood runs free on streets that he helped wear a slick. That old man, not here anymore. Behind us, no one is left to help us keep score. Behind us, no one is left to bring us up to date on what happened before. Behind us, no one is left. It's called keeping score. Thank you, my name is Chaos. Thank you for sharing that. That's so vivid and real. And I appreciate you donating that to our newsletter for next month. Thank you. And now we have Lantern Carrier. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. United in this love. For we are in light as gold and sparks reacting to the cause and effect of this cyclical game. The strong waves we sail upon, the ashen clouds on which we drift are naught but the sweet chords of the beloved's music. The lost forest roamed on yesteryears are the blooming flowers of today's sunset, the redolent blossoms of tomorrow's radiant sunrise. Each now is the morn of another daybreak that keeps our flames burning the winds of transformation lies within its sacred heart. Nothing happens without the rhapsody. The translucent heavens are a projection of its luster, the rivers but a flowing of its breath. We're in this dance as wayfarers traveling on a GPS all mapped out for us in a journey of self-transcendence, a gift of love. Our fears, our challenges are but the veil of the invisible cloaking our hopes with shadows, yet hugging and kissing our souls with sunlight, replenishing new life. Nature whispers of its flames like a row of golden lanterns. The skylark sings of the songbird of the soul. Night heralds the candescent moon. Winter inevitably dissipates so we can enjoy the grandeur of spring flowers. Dawn brings us song bearers so hearts can be citadels of beauty. We exist to dream on the supernal lap of wonder, to blend with love in the peerless ocean of the unknown. Poem two. When a 22 year old, when a 22 year old inauguration poet goes viral in 10 minutes, he tells me that wherever I am in the world arena, I'm in need of the light a spirit offers. Some leaders are just tiny parts of a much larger problem the death of the soul. Amanda's strength is that she angles the darkness into the citadel of cosmic light. I offer myself to my beloved and the whole universe works with me. I know that where my treasure lies, there will my heart be also. 
the heart, the heart. For me, nothing else matters. I follow the call of this bodily temple, transform myself in amazing ways. A cascade of beauty follows my path, a fragrance of sojourners walking the Tao. I burn in its alchemy and a path paved with challenges. My desires, greed, attachments are not but the beloved's labyrinth to find my way home. For a slow student, the good teacher repeats each lesson again and again. Whenever my queen embraces me, she removes worn strands from my blueprint of memories. I ascend on the flames of the phoenix, crawling in spirals like a snake, shaped like soft clay in the hands of my weaver. I attune to the moon and twinkle of stars. I saw upwards as Orion dances, preparing a banquet for emperors and queens. I, who was lost in turbulent waters, now turn my gaze to welcome the show. I sail on a vista of new horizons, away from sad songs of supremacy, adorned by the lyrics of magical psalms, cascading their rays to the harp of my soul. I know from the sad tales of Pharisees that the mind's brilliance is no match for the unspoken radiance of the heart. So I speak not of inequities, but study the scents of fragrant roses. It is the myriad notes in an orchestra that blends the music together, like the silent awe in a poem sublime. It is love which gives me the sting of thorns to transform me into roses. Any erroneous leadership eventually lead to a brighter sunrise. Stars walls on the darkness, so hearts may rejoice. Thank you, Lantern Carrier. Oh my gosh, Lantern Carrier, so lyrical and the way that you personify nature and every movement with light and joy and love, it's just so inspiring. I really, I love your poetry so um, much. You're kind, you're so kind. Thank oh, you, you are you. too. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now we have Francesca Kirkpatrick. Can I ask something very quickly? Is it okay to, to read something because you remember it and it was your bio at one point because I just thought it was important for people to understand that, that things that we thought we did back even just last year is not possible right now. Mm -mm. So is it okay for me to read a little bit just to sure. say to myself, I know that we can, you know, we, we will start anew, but this is the old, the old um, something. And why I will read my name is because it is my, was my bio of sorts and it doesn't have particularly anything to do with writing, but it does. So anyway, <sighs> Francesca's bio. Francesca began acting at a very young age. One of her favorite memories is being an extra on CBS movie about Hank Williams Jr. when she was six years old. Growing up in Nashville, she had the experience of being a part of a big country family of music. In high school, Francesca studied acting for four years with Oprah Winfrey's acting coach, Peggy Angland, and she has recently been involved in over 50 episodes of the TV show Nashville seasons one through six and the TV show Messiah uh, playing characters from teachers to TV reporters to photographers. She has also been involved with Still the King, another CMT project. Francesca has been an extra in many country music videos and TV shows and documentaries filmed in Nashville. And she has played a small role in the Dottie West story. Francesca's worked for 103 WKDF and 104.5 The Arrow in Nashville in both the country music and rock radio formats, where she got to know some of the major artists of today. She worked for our artists such as Alice Moyer, which is a writer at the porch, um, Drive By Truckers, The Kings of Leon. Um, Big Henny of Big and Rich and the iconic national venue 12th and Porter. She also has co-written many songs that appeared 
on various albums done primarily, and she's also done artwork and photography on CD jackets as well as video footage, numerous live performances. Francesca is a member of the Tennessee Screenwriters, Women in Film and Television, and Women in Film and Media, and enjoys participating in independent film events in Nashville, such as the Nashville Film Festival, um, Francesca directs and she makes her own videos uh, and has been given awards in a number of student films in Watkins Film College, NFI Film Institute, MTSU, Vanderbilt, Nazi College of Art. Francesca has played the lead role in some independent shorts um, called Voices of the Night and Clockwork Intimacy and has co-starred in numerous other films. She has also played an extra in many Studio releases, Country Strong, and Pure Country Gift 2. Francesca has attended the 2012 through 2019 Cannes Film Festival. That's in France. Uh, 2013 through 2015 Sundance Film Festival. And, and the 2015 Barcelona and the Tribeca Film Festival in 2019. A workshop with the Royal Academy a Dramatic Art on the Queen Mary 2 cruise ship. She looks forward to working on new projects in the future and having new adventures with her ever growing film family. And thank you guys. I, I'm not trying to brag. I was just trying to say, look at what our life is. <laughs> but I love it with you guys. Okay. That that's the main point. I'm not trying to brag about anything that I have done. I'm just saying that that was a life that I know was was something from then and so just go back and and think about okay all the things that i do that there could be so much more that we can do in our future and to love each other give each other hugs and support each other in this in this uh pandemic you writers are my life my loves thank you so much thank you that was wonderful that you have such breadth of experience and I hope you're able to get back out there as soon as we're all able to get back out there. And thank you for reminding us of all of the affected industries, entertainment, music. This town is not the same right now. So, okay. Well, thank, thank you, you, Amy. Thank you. Now we have Tessa. Tessa, there you are. <laughs> Can you hear me? I can hear you well, thank you. Okay, okay. This is called uh, For a Friend. The heart of love in rocket music, beneath all the mental games people play, the great, greater, greatest power is love. Beneath the suffering is love. Beneath the pain is, is a safetyness of love. Not a gaping, empty love, but a sense of wholeness love. The saving grace of great spirit love. Not the I got you in, the, in a malicious way, because this is not where this kind of love dwells. But in this empty, emptiness of a blank piece of paper, that is the grass, that is the flower, that is the water, that is the cloud, that is the rain, that is the seed. It created the tree. They created the paper on which you, you now can write and or design into what gets you, what lovingly, patiently holds you in the space of nothingness that is something, because it is at least silence that remembers, that for you, all the good you have put into the world. It goes to the depths of your pain with you and calls you out of this to join back in the good love you added to the others in the world. I still think this kind of love, the loving understanding part kind, type of love that was made that that was not made known to you, but was but is was is message to you and is message to you still. It is one of the greatest forms of love. Thank you. Did you have another? No, just uh, just that one. That was beautiful. I Thanks. Love it. Thank you. Thanks. 
You're welcome. And now we have Brian Ira Franco. If you're ready. I am ready. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for Yay. To, to arrive late. I'm sorry. I'm I, sure. I was running errands and lost track of time and boy vey. Um, no problem. So, uh, how much time do I have, Amy? Amy, how much time do I have? Okay. Five oh. minutes. Five minutes. Oh, okay. I'm just going to do two pieces. The first is an ekphrastic poem um, that I did a few weeks ago in a workshop. Um, and I'm reading it because of the the ring that um, Amanda Gorman wore, wore, wrote that wore that Oprah Winfrey gave her of the caged bird. But this is called Why the Cage Therapy Patient Paints. Um, I don't think Renee Magritte knew Maya Angelou from Adam or even Eve. She was only nine when he painted the therapist in 1937. The painting depicted the top half of a sitting man's body as a bird cage partially covered with a blanket with two doves inside. Maybe he time traveled and landed in 1969 Harlem, wandered into a bookstore and heard a black American woman's learned voice reading the book she wrote, speaking her truth in a way he had never heard a woman speak before. When he returned to 1937, he destroyed the time machine. He sat contemplating the future for at least an hour or two and realized women had minds of their own that were being wasted by being treated as second-class citizens and being married off. He realized his society caged women in and in doing so, caged men in by happenstance. He felt caged in himself without realizing it he had been to psychotherapy and Maya Angelou was his therapist. Uh, the next is called Why I Keep a Midwife on Speed Dial. Anger does not always happen, uh, happen as screaming, yelling, stomping of feet, fists clenching, teeth gritting, furrowed brows, tattered nerves. Anger is not always born of aggression. It can be born of hurt and confusion from a womb unaware of the existence of its pregnancy, conceived via an act of deception or betrayal from a night of passion that foreshadowed a proposal of forever, but materialized into a morning after with an empty other side of the bed that transformed into an insidious compartmentalized ghost. Anger is not always loud. Anger can exist in silence and stagnation. Anger may not have hard edges that cut and bruise all who come in contact with it. It can be soft. It can be amorphous, made of quicksand, encompassing its host and suspended animation, causing phantom paralysis till whoever owns it realizes the phantom is a phantom, a figment of an emotion or a feeling or a reaction to a life event or events that happened in the past. That is exactly what it is, the past, which can't exist in the present or future due to the fact that the past can only exist in the past. Then the anger starts to shed its skin to reveal a hollow inside that is a breath long held, now exhaled and let go. Gracias, everyone. Wow. Wow. Both of those are so powerful and well-crafted. Thank you for sharing that. Thank well, you. It means a lot hearing that from you, Amy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, now we have gone through our list. Is there anyone else who would like to read? That's John here. I guess I'll read one if you want. Go for okay, it, John. Thank you. Crime wave. I don't know about murder hornets, but cockroaches loiter in my cupboards and drunk and disorderly geese honk to hip hop music and Till dawn. But you know what they say. When Canada sends its waterfall, they don't send their best. They send hooligans, delinquents, and scofflaws, smuggling maple syrup and back bacon in their beaks. Law enforcement is a joke. Cops look the other way when raccoons shoplift beak jerky from the 7 Eleven. They even let the black bear who broke into my kitchen off with a warning. Otters or longhorn beetles must be paying them off. When I discovered a blue jay was using my credit card number to buy 50-pound sacks of birdseed online, I didn't bother reporting it. 
I blame the media with all the lewdness on those PBS nature documentaries. Is it any wonder that gangs of white tailed deer shake down business owners and woodchucks sell crack cocaine by Mrs. Blum Trapsters petunias? Hell, the only reason the feds locked up that bighorn sheep was for tax evasion. Thank God the murder hornets haven't made it here yet. The manslaughter spiders and assault and battery weevils are bad enough. Why? Just last week, there was a home invasion of carpenter ants, all with their little saws and hammers at the Dundersteads place. I've taken to keeping my shotgun loaded and propped by the door. If any mallard sparrows or nuthatches want to mess with me or mine, I'll be ready. It's <laughs> amazing. Thank you. Can I say something, Amy? I can't Super. comment, but I uh, see Marilyn wrote me something, and also Henry. I just want to say thank you. Uh, yes, I'm on Facebook as Francesca, Queen Francesca, and I'm Francesca Kirkpatrick, so um, find me there. I'm sorry. I, I can't type into my portal, and I'm not signed in to leave my mess, leave my stuff, so thanks. That's totally fine. Anyone else want to read before I get into some some poetry? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Mervyn, would you? Okay, I'm gonna do one that's published and then one I just wrote. Hmm. So, <clears throat> all right, first one, Stains of His Memory. My mother loved the beige house with orange, apple, kiwi, and two mango trees spread across the backyard. Our home was in South Miami, streets filled with loose battle type rock wallers and pit bulls seeking walkers falsely secure by weak fences. This was a neighborhood we could afford. A house claiming safety behind bars on windows and doors, feeling of prison when we could not find the keys. My stepfather plagued with tempered emotions, lost promotions during a military life of 20 years, infested with drug addiction from Vietnam War, moments away in Korea, finding outlets to deal with the images and pain. Still high, soaked on those images and pain, spending days away from home after his paychecks came from his security guard job, coming back with ashes left. Spare change, could not keep our lights on, keep our water running, keep our home. My mother found a brandy glass covered in aluminum foil, burnt rocks left with yellow stains in the glass, stains in my stepfather's memories released in smoke. The one I just wrote, <clears throat> okay. we are all divided. We are all divided in our minutia of thoughts, our rivers grinding their paths in mountain majesty before us, our decisions dwaddled by the dams that we as beavers abruptly build. In society divided by color, class, creed, culture, complexion, in social pairings segregated by generations, gender, body dimensions, coolness, subject, intelligence, awkwardness, sexuality, and family, distinct by seconds of birth, first child, middle child, mother's favorite, father's abused, the mistake child, fractions by faith, belief, religion, a lifestyle, financial means, we, our strings, in a woven quilt, fraying, restitching, concealing scum, sludge gaped holes across a country where bold colors are bleeding over. We are separated by a cause measured in protest, prison cells, personal coops, placing those unlike us in cages, making them fall in a labyrinth, canceling their thoughts, opinions, dreams, desires, posts we don't agree with. We trap ourselves 
siloed in boxes of people mirroring social media groups, our safe, our safe spaces with hairline fractures of partitions. We have forgotten our frail existence to continue life. We. Can we unmute for that? <laughs> Oh my gosh, that was amazing. Good job. Mm -hmm. So real. So good. Thank you. And next we have Christina Hogg. Hi there. <laughs> um, I'll do you a very, very short one. I don't know if you know the game Wink murder it just you have a bunch of people in a room and um it seems a bit silly after following that serious poetry anyway and um you have to somebody somebody gets a piece of paper saying they're the murderer and they have to go winking at, at people and uh, they and then they have to pretend to drop dead and um it's surprising how much winking can go on without anybody knowing who, who, who the murderer is. I don't know if you would believe that. <laughs> ah! <laughs> so this is about that. Wink murder. I got the short straw. I wink, you die. You can do the whole room before anyone's sus as it's you. Just goes to show you could make secret signals and no one had noticed. No. Give us a wink, love. It's killing us. So that's that. <laughs> Thanks. Um, uh, I think I might have seen a couple of you guys in, pa in Paris, Paris on Zoom. And so um, I thought I might write something about when I've been there. Because um, I know Dave Barnes who used to host it there. So uh, this is about Paris. Paris not <laughs> summer. I look for you everywhere at 90s February, Paris 1991, shadows off of the Eiffel Tower, tourists somewhere, you are down there, the one I seek for all the world, an unknown quantity or quality production street. L'Avenue Le Chaliers, Le Monet, the Champs d'Elysees of John Goddard, of Jean Seberg, of French's Foreigner. To listen to all these art college conspiracies of cliches banned from central arrondissements by previous unsuitable classes, third years. A notre bottle de vin, c'est vous play in Cockney, Estuary English, is accented, accented confidence. I've got more French, but let him take the lead. That's where I learned to drink, leap metro barriers, no paper frank ticket machine, can cure my first hangover characters of Dave awoke up a myth with his face in a plate of pate, sat at a desk with the unused bed untouched behind him. He admires a blonde in boots with eyeliner beats, so easy to do, you, you don't do guided walks to Baudelaire, Baudelaire sculpture parks led by ball blokes. I went to Paris once. You can throw banana skins off the top. They go sideways, catching the drift of his Valentine's tulips, wet hair outside pastry dis displays, indistinct mono winter warm mono winter warmer tickets stuck in the fence post, just discovered in tree color packaging. Invite me in and double takes. After I come out of the hairdressers, Com Rachel in friends, zigzag partings. It's a different era. It's ages later. Dorman on the door with a poodle under arm, quaff, quaff, a petite sugared almond in a tiny porcelain saucer, view of aforementioned tower worth every euro by now. More monos, you never grow out of the water lilies of disappointment. No one gets drunk. Chinese restaurant, not charcutiers. Waiters, pots and pots of Parisian experiences start to mix up in several district, districts and get get no clocks, not like a real place and yet it is a small boy fascinated with a melted motorbike and the only boy with long hair over his ears in the jardin of puppeteers ices on corners and amusing wee wee on grass knickers down like the rural lasses by your woman get invited by another day playing lining up the chairs into trains choo choo 
every metro has a different colored plastic chairs orange green this is the leg of journey that the june he incredibly enjoys getting invited several times and finally going through tunnels of beds that lift into ceilings of his and girlfriend's depression by the lost brothers adventures down circular disused railway lines to pop up in parks to not get a picnic electric piano disorganized um, meringue tentative expeditions walking up to catch up as recovered injury fought early funny woody allen apartment an aviary arbor baritum late risers fish talks for writers i am writing to impress him i know what i'm doing i'm writing to him about sailors ships and shits murd bogart new york new york herald tribune peddled in black and white and later looking for lee marvin in a dubious moral code with clint and black panther tragedies we reach the streets i cry in exhaustion away from la defense no 50s dress no accessories dave isn't any having any go to charlie knocked awake by the leap from the third story bunk in contrast the bed ladder, ladder guide glides and lowers on the runners of the smooth forbearings luxury therapy sessions doorbell monies am i running at a time we let we walk left banks share, sane and share beers all civilized sunsets the day mr withers and foreigners discuss sheffielders abroad i never saw him i look for you everywhere and all the time you were somewhere without me even looking there i've never known anyone talk so much dave says exasperated soggy pizza as british as his pocketed off beige trousers we are heckled with americans present paris out Par paris is a parody of herself by where bombshells were in hindsight holly is a parody of himself I'm in a world of overused cliches, movie reel and half unpronounced mixes in cellars. I have the bed of French, but I don't like to say it's Maybank holiday Monday, but not here, not 21st century. I have a swanky modes close encounter with a bob haired bartender on the steps suspended. We, oui, you may ask me. Yes, really. Mais non, very much. He clings to my unknown love handles through a shower curtain. I did not think that was going to happen. I wonder about them. Now is it still Zoom or is it on standstill? No, it's on tonight. I'm missing it as I type like a banana skin flung caught by the wind and carried across Paris into a fondant, foggy, clear filigree, empty tree shadows, blue jean, February skies as I saw it sober for the first time. They always looked out for him the whole time. But they never saw him. I look for you everywhere, and all the time you were somewhere in Paris, not summer. I better stop there. <laughs> oh. That was amazing. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my gosh, the wordplay and the proper names and the alliteration and the pace and it just makes you want to go again it's just beautiful thank you i would love Absolutely. to see that in writing yeah sure i'll, yeah. I'll email it play me yeah 100%. <laughs> very talented christina thank you very much for sharing oh thanks for having us <laughs> i've never been to that nashville <laughs> i've always wanted to go now you have yeah. you're welcome yeah <laughs> i love you <laughs> Why don't we all meet in Paris next year? That'd be yeah, lovely. We should totally plan it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that would be great. I'm on it. I'll plan it. Mad so love cool. with Paris and Nashville 2022. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a four hour drive here. <laughs> we can go. <laughs> it's Christina's fault. She invited us all to Paris. <laughs> Yeah, tell Dave if Dave Barnes you're on his floor. <laughs> and it's, um, only a, it's a quick uh, run for men, so. Yeah, I still got my Eurostar ticket. They rolled it over because I was supposed to go in March with my daughter. And so, I don't know, then maybe they'll roll it over again and say, Aww. sure, come along. <laughs> Who knows? That would be lovely. I, it's it's it, it's yeah. so hard to describe it, and you did it so well. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Well, now I'm going to read a couple and then we can close out in case you guys want to go to Poetry in the Brew at 545, an hour from now. Um, 
the first one, let's see, it's up here, is about a guy in college, right? It's, <laughs> it's called Polarity One. The books open themselves for you. A glass of wine at your bedside as is your nighttime habit. The cat needing your stomach muscles, it needs you. You push it away eventually in your way. The poem is by Edna St. Vincent Millay. What face do you give your past? What label are you pinning to my brow? A number on my pillow, an empty glass? Two, edge, cliff of silence, and I with my minutes, my hours, my months, the earth poised. What is this woman? What is this scream, this terrible smile, this swallowing, accepting softness, breasts, invisible rhythm that bonds? What is this man of dark, unclouded brow, money and possession, love and cigarettes externalized? How can he help but be soft on the inside? A lead balloon full of wine, aging well. Three, over the cliff my eyes fall, but not me. There is a balance of powers here, innate, River and earth or some other two things in time worn down, the boundaries clear, jagged, eroding with the wind, the breath of change. So that was a college poem. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, thank you. And now I have a modern one from like driving around Nashville, but before Christmas in the fall all the same in the shadow of the homeless man the new amazon building comes up construction workers and homeless alike on the curb eating their mcdonald's the richest country in the world who knows anymore but the homeless men women and children living under the overpass tent cities cleared and nowhere to go the safety net is still there food health care, a place to spend the night, but it's getting thinner every day. And a proposal to stop feeding the homeless as if they're not real people, as if they don't matter anymore. The homeless mother and daughter came to our agency in Atlanta, seeking shelter, food, anything. My boss said, coffee's all we have. The mother poured so much sugar or creamer into the cup for her daughter. Drink up, baby, drink up. That's breakfast for now. My boss said a lot of women experiencing domestic violence will leave home with their children after the end of the school year, so their numbers spike. There's a huge percentage of homeless veterans that this is so stuns and shocks me for how you care for us all, Lord. Sweet, good Lord, how you care for us all. Pray for us to find solutions, expand the safety net, Every one of us could become homeless at any time. The homeless are citizens too, in the shadows of the new unaffordable housing high rises. The homeless and the construction workers blend with the tourists walking down Broadway. They blend, we are the same. Perhaps the homeless need a voice, those who help them too. After all, we are all the same. They are just like me and you. <laughs> thank you thank you i appreciate that gosh you guys what an awesome session we've had i'm it just was beautiful i've had such a great time we're blessed to have each other stay safe we're blessed to have summer jade still in the house <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yeah. I enjoy everybody. Thank you, Thank you. Thanks, Summer. Mm -hmm. Woohoo! I'll, I'll definitely be coming to Gasol in a future month. This has been an amazing event, definitely. Oh, good. Thank you. Please do. February 27th, Maggie Lee Sanders is going to be our feature at 3 p.m. And we also have Linguist coming up on. No, uh, February 21st at 3 p.m. 3 to 5 mm -hmm. with the wonderful Edith Blackbird. <laughs> so guys, thank you so much for being here. I hate to sign off, but it's it's time. <laughs>
Thank you all so much. Thank you so much for being here, Sammy. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.